Alexander Nix made out that it was you who was the liar today. I mean, time and time again, he said you had misled MPs, you'd told them things that just weren't true. Um, what's your response? Well, uh, as the chair, Damien Collins, has said uh, at committee today, I actually backed up everything that I said with documents. Uh, and it's not just me. Uh, it, it is several other people who have come forward to the committee and to, and to uh, journalists at The Guardian and at Channel 4 uh, who have also corroborated uh, the claims that I have made. Um, so I, I'm quite comfortable standing by the statements that I made uh, both to the committee and to the, and to the media. And, and more broadly, you know, this is, this is a man who is being completely discredited uh, because, as he admits, he seems to be a compulsive liar. And his only defense right now is that he was consistently lying to clients left, right and centre. On, on points of fact, though, you know, yeah. he, he says you, you effectively told the committee that Cambridge Analytica had a pivotal role in the Brexit campaign, they didn't vote for vote leave. They didn't work for vote leave, and what, they didn't vote for what, leave. Eu. What I mean, do you, do you what still I, think? That? What I said was that the company uh, Cambridge Analytica did play a pivotal role in Brexit because of its creation of Aggregate IQ, which received forty percent of vote leave spending. That was the company in Canada. The company in Canada that was listed as SCL Canada and worked uh, on building the Ripon platform, which is the platform that used all the misappropriated Facebook data. So what I was saying is that they did, yes, play a pivotal role in. Brexit because of the companies and the technologies that it created, which were then used by Vote Leave. He said you were also wrong in the allegations you made about what they did in Africa. Do you still stand by it? There's by videos, that? there's documents, uh, there's, other, uh, there's other people who were there who are witnesses who've backed up the, the things that I've said. Um, you know, the, again, this is me providing documentation. This is me providing videos. This is me providing emails. You don't have to take my word for it. It is, it is documented in evidence. I mean, ultimately, he was, he was making you out as an embittered man. You know, that he said you had more data than anybody else, that you had then tried to sell uh, the, these services to the same clients, and when you couldn't, you turned on Cambridge Analytica. I mean, that's the way he tried to to paint you out today. Yeah, and it's just flatly untrue. Um, but again, this is a man whose only defense is that he's a compulsive liar. So I don't think he's a credible, I don't think he's a credible witness and I don't think we should take him seriously. I mean, look, a lot of our viewers might be wondering why we're all still going on about this. Right. I mean, why does it matter? Well, it matters because of a wider issue that is ex it's exposed, which is how social media uh, is now playing a role in impacting our democracy. And that's really important uh, for, for, for parliaments around the world to debate and understand and really to look more broadly at technology companies like Facebook and how they've been extremely reckless with, with very sensitive personal data and the impacts that that can have. But what, we, what do you feel seen, is still going on? What the, well, what we've, what we've seen is the total lack of transparency of Facebook. They refuse to come to, you know, Mark Zuckerberg refuses continuously to come to the British Parliament and testify because he knows that he's going to get asked tough, tough questions that he doesn't want to answer. Like, was, did, did, did uh, misappropriated, misappropriated data, which was used on, on, on Facebook, a, affect the results uh, of the Trump election? And again, what was Vote Leave doing during Brexit? Uh, because 40% of their spending went to AIQ, a company that was set up at Cambridge Analytica, and most of that money ended up going onto Facebook uh, targeting. So it, it, it matters for the future of our democracy and it also matters when we think about the fact that as technology further integrates in our lives, more and more data about us is being produced. And if we, if we allow companies in a totally unregulated and unchecked way to manipulate that information and indeed what we see around us, that is, that is a loss of agency for people and that matters. Because that affects, that affects how we live, that affects who we know, what we interact with, our job opportunities, and indeed the, 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 the outcome of our elections. And, and, and do you think this is still going on by somebody else? You know, if Cambridge Analytica is shut down, you know, what, what do we need to fear? We, we, we need, we, I think the, the, the response of Facebook is really telling. The fact that they don't want to give answers about what's happening on their platform, I think is quite revealing. Why isn't it that, why, why does Mark Zuckerberg not want to come to, to committee? Why doesn't he want to come and testify? Because there is something happening in these companies that they don't want us to see. And I think it's the fact that this is a much more pervasive problem than, than, than what Facebook or other companies would be comfortable with us seeing. We, we should also make clear that AIQ say that they are not Cambridge Analytica. Um, well, sure, but they built Cambridge Analytica's technology, as, as Gizmodo and uh, uh, UpGuard have revealed, the data was integrated. And Nick's admitted that, that they did work for them. Yeah, um, they, but they were tied at the hip.
You've also said that you are talking to police on both sides of the Atlantic. Yes. What can you tell us about what they're asking you about? Um, so, uh, I, I've been dealing with the National Crime Agency in Britain and the FBI um, in the United States. Um, I can't speak specifically as to what they are what they are asking about, but what I can say more generally is that they are they are exploring various potential crimes that have been committed uh, by Cambridge Analytica and actors within Cambridge Analytica on both sides of the on world. both sides of the Atlantic. Yeah. I mean, how has this been for you? I mean, you know, six months ago, you were well known in a very small circle of people. Mm. Now, your face and your claims have been splashed all over the world. Mm. Um, you have been attacked, your credibility has been attacked. Yeah. Um, and you're, you've been at the, the heart of the storm. Yeah. What kind of effect has that had on you? Um, it's, you know, it, it's not about me, it's about what I'm saying that's important. And um, the thing that I find really heartening is the fact that I've now uh, been invited to four jurisdictions to testify at legislatures in, in, in four jurisdictions and that um, our legislators are starting to realize that actually technology is not a niche issue. Technology affects everybody and that we need to take it seriously um, because uh, as society evolves with technology, this is only going to, to grow and inter further integrate with our lives. So I'm actually quite heartened by the fact that this story has made an impact. Um, you know, that's in large part due to, you know, Channel 4's work as well as The Guardian and, and The New York Times um, to, to finally show people what the impact of technology can be on our democracy. And so I, th I, I think that the reaction um, is, is promising and I'm optimistic about it.